In this lecture, we are going to talk about neural architecture search. Specifically, we will just mention several high-level concepts and discuss a few papers on a high level. It's mainly there to give you a quick introduction into the field. There are multiple components to neural architecture search. The search space defines what type of architecture is being searched. So the architecture that you can find is limited by the search space. You can only find, explore and evaluate architectures that are part of the search space. One extreme would be to have a search space that is really very, very large so that almost any type of architecture would be part of the search space. Another extreme is to have a search space that is very small. In this case, you could set up a search space to just evaluate a few options and uh, you determine a lot of uh, options already by your background knowledge or by whatever you think is good. And um, the size of the search space has a big impact on neural architecture search. Then, there are multiple options for the search strategy or the search algorithm itself. How are we going to explore the options in the search space? For example, we could just randomly try out different options, so we could randomly maybe sample a possible architecture from the search space, train it, do this a thousand times, and then pick the architecture that performs best. So in this case, the search strategy would be some form of random search. Then we need some performance estimation strategy. So how can we evaluate one architecture out of the architecture search space. The simple choice would be to take the architecture, train it on the training set and evaluate it on the VAL set. And the longer we train on the training set, the better. Maybe we train it until convergence. However, this leads to the problem that one evaluation would be very costly. Think about training one architecture on ImageNet until convergence. So this by itself would be really, really costly. Therefore, when we think about performance estimation strategies for neural architecture search, um, what people are exploring here are ways to estimate performance by uh, doing some shortcuts and doing this maybe a lot quicker than just training a network until convergence. However, also training a network until convergence is a valid performance estimation strategy. Let us go over the list of search strategies. So, of course, this list is not exhaustive. These are just some of the search strategies that have been proposed. Reinforcement learning, evolutionary algorithms, genetic algorithms, sequential model-based optimization, Bayesian optimization, hill climbing, multi-objective search, super network search, and gradient-based optimization. We will see a few selected examples. One thing to note about the search strategy is that people often distinguish between macro search and micro search. That means searching complete architectures versus searching for individual cells or building blocks. So macro search refers to searching for the complete architecture and micro search means you're searching for building blocks or cells and then you combine these cells that you found into a handcrafted overall architecture. 
we will see simple examples of that. Here's a link to a list of literature that was compiled by one particular person or group. So if you click this link, you will get to a web page that tries to accumulate important papers in the field of neural architecture search. And here is this web page. So you can see by just scrolling through that there are quite a lot of contributions in this field and that it is a popular field. All right, the papers that we will look at here are mainly early papers in the field that just introduced some of the main ideas and the main concepts. The field has evolved probably considerably since then, so we'll just give some of the initial ideas in this lecture. Also note that neural architecture search can in some way be split according to different applications. The most obvious application to consider are image classification networks, neural architecture search for ImageNet, neural architecture search for SciFAR. But you could also then ask, okay, how about neural architecture search for segmentation, for depth estimation, for 3D reconstruction? So in some sense, you could try to separately ask for each application what is the best uh, method for neural architecture search. Do the ideas from neural architecture search for image classification carry over to other applications? So we will not look at these other applications. We will mainly look at neural architecture search for image classification to build our basis here in this lecture. I believe the first paper in the field, or at least the first notable paper in the field, proposed to use reinforcement learning for neural architecture search. There is a link here to a YouTube talk about the paper that I found was really good in summarizing all of the main ideas that are introduced in this paper. Just a warning up front, the authors used 800 GPUs for training this uh, reinforcement learning network that led to the results that the authors obtained. Let's look at this overview figure here on top of the slide. To the left, we see the controller RNN. The controller RNN is a neural network that has a fixed architecture. This network should be trained to propose child architectures that then are good for training something. So in our example, we'll just think about image classification. So the controller RNN is able to output a child architecture. And uh, this process is called sampling an architecture A with probability P. Then we can train a child network and uh, the child network has this architecture A that has been sampled by the controller RNN and this will be trained to get some accuracy R. The higher the accuracy R, the better. Then, without going into the details of um, reinforcement learning again, somehow the magic of reinforcement learning allows us to get some gradient P uh, using the reinforce algorithm, in this case, to update the controller network to the left. So uh, we'll get some gradient and we'll learn something new for the controller net 
RNN and hopefully the controller network gets better and better by the feedback it gets from training the child networks. So in this initial version, the child networks are actually trained for a long time, they're trained to convergence and evaluated on the validation set. This also explains why 800 GPUs were used in this neural architecture search idea. Again, this uh, reinforcement learning is done using the reinforce algorithm. Then, many child architectures can be trained in parallel with asynchronous optimization. So, one question is, how many child architectures does the controller output in order to get uh, a gradient update? This is the controller network in a bit more detail. The controller network is a two-layer LSTM with 35 hidden units each layer. So this thing here is an LSTM cell and um, this is the first layer and then this is the second LSTM layer. And uh, this controller network generates the output network, the child network architecture, one layer at a time. So um, let's just say that there are these anchor points and between these anchor points you can find a lot of parameters for a given layer. The choices that we have are discrete choices such as what is the filter height? Should we be 1, 3, 5 or 7? Again, the options here have to be predetermined and the network chooses between these options using a softmax. So what you see here in this diagram, let's say we start the layer and then there's going to be the question, what is the filter height of the new layer? And then the LSTM is going to output a filter height. It's going to be either 1, 3, 5 or 7 selected by softmax. Next we'll select the filter width and then we will select uh, maybe the number of filters and uh, so number of filters is not shown here so let's say number of filters could be something uh, along these four something among these four choices and then we also select the stride height and the stride width Also, skip connections are being used so that the input to a subsequent layer is not only uh, the previous layer, but um, the information from layers before the previous layer can also be uh, used using skip connections. I skipped the details of the uh, reinforcement learning part, but you can refer to the paper and I also have some of that on the slides. Next, let's look at the paper NASNet. So, the paper is called Learning Transferable Architectures for Scalable Image Recognition. This work is still hardware intensive, but less so. Only 500 GPUs were used this time. Here are some of the main ideas. The architecture search is run for cells on SciFAR 10 and then these cells are transferred to ImageNet. The paper looks at creating a better search space. How can this be done? And also the paper presents the realization that random search is actually similar to reinforcement learning in performance. Again, this is one of the standard problems in neural architecture search because if you cleverly restrict the search space, you might get a good result 
just because of your clever search space design and not because of your clever neural architecture search algorithm. For this paper, we'll mainly focus on looking at the um, architecture that was found. And looking at the architecture that was found, uh, this should give some idea of what the search space looked like. So this is the architecture template that is being used and that um, is manually designed. And then for this architecture template, the cells are being found by neural architecture search. Let's look at cipher 10. So as input, we receive an image. Then the image goes through a normal cell that is repeated n times, and this is followed by a reduction cell, followed by n normal cells, another reduction cell, another set of n normal cells, and then finally a softmax. ImageNet is very similar. The main difference that we can see is that there's a first initial 3x3 three three conf stride 2 layer to downsample the image. And then there is this set of two reduction cells to further downsample the image. So if we consider this as being the stem of the architecture, then this mainly does some downsampling to get to a smaller tensor resolution. And then again, you see this pattern of n normal cells and then a reduction cell, again, n normal cells, reduction cell. All right. This n can vary and is another parameter. All right, here is the result that was found using neural architecture search. We see the result for the normal cell and the reduction cell here on this slide. As you can guess from the names, the normal cell has an input and an output that have the same resolution and the reduction cell reduces the resolution by a factor of two in each dimension. That means width and height will be divided by 2. The input to a cell are the outputs of the two lower cells. That means not only the output of the immediately previous cell is taken as input, but also the output of the cell that is before the previous cell. So in the figure, to highlight that, we have this is the output from the previous cell and this is the output of the cell before the previous cell and these two are taken as input and this is the output of the cell and in between this thing here is basically the cell all right let's delete that so this architecture also has a restricted search space. So let's look at what can be found by this architecture search. So how this thing works is that it first samples one input and an operation, then another input, another operation, and then it samples a way to combine the two outputs. All right, so when we start out, we can mainly select from the output of the previous cell and the output of the cell before as inputs. So let's say here, when we look at this on the way left, we sample HI as input and sep separable 3x3 three three convolution as operation. Then we sample again HI as input and identity 
as operation. And then we combine these two with the add operation. All right. Next, we sample hi minus 1 as input and this separable 3 by 3 convolution as operation. And then we sample hi as input and separable 5 by 5 convolution as operation. And again, we sample add to combine these two things. So for this next block, again, we sample hi minus 1 for the first input. This is the operation. hi minus 1 is the second input. This is the operation. And this is the way to combine the two things. So this normal cell that was found is a bit unique because you see that all combinations are only adds that were sampled. Also, you see that only hi minus 1 and, sorry, hi minus 1 here, and hi were sampled as inputs. However, once we come, let's say, to sampling something over here, we are not restricted to only select from hi and hi minus 1 as input. We also could have selected maybe this output here as input. So, for example, they could have been sampled something like here, where not this is used as input, but this here is used as input. This is what you see happening in the reduction cell. So, for example, for this part here, we see that the first input that was sampled is hi, but the second input that is sampled is actually the output of something that was computed here. So this is the second input of this block here. All right. So I hope this gives some idea of the search space that was uh, investigated in this paper. Also, here's a list of what type of operations uh, were searched for or were being sampled. We see identity. This is the separable 3x3 three three convolution, separable 7x7 seven seven convolution, 3x3 three three dilated convolution, 3x3 three three average pooling. We have some max pooling, uh, some regular convolutions, and depthwise separable convolution. Here we look at this paper, Efficient Neural Architecture Search via Parameter Sharing, also known as ENAS for short. These are the main ideas of the paper. The authors observe that the computational bottleneck of neural architecture search is the training of each child model to convergence, only to measure its accuracy and then throwing away all the trained weights. So what the authors set out to do is to do some weight sharing between different architectures that are being investigated as candidates. They're setting up a super architecture and train networks that are subgraphs of the super architecture. This allows them to uh, do all computations on a single GPU. This marks an important departure from the previous approaches that were complete overkill and totally infeasible for any person that doesn't have hundreds of GPUs. And even though uh, these are drastic simplifications, the results are comparable to previous work. So this is a fairly abstract uh, visualization of this idea. We can set up a supergraph that has the nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, this supergraph has nodes and edges, but we'll use a subset of those for the architecture that we will use in the end. And then um, the weights that are trained to get the edges, they can be reused when training 
are different types of architectures. So uh, this is a simplification, this is kind of a simplifying assumption that uh, if we have the edges that are shared by different architectures, that it makes sense to give them uh, the same weights. Now, we'll just leave this with this very abstract high-level description and go on to the next paper. Progressive Neural Architecture Search, or PNAS for short. The algorithm is an algorithm that is growing networks. We start with small one-block networks, and then we add blocks one block at a time. Then we pick the well-performing ones and make modifications, mainly adding more blocks. You could think about this as growing networks one layer at a time and then repeat until you have a sufficient amount of blocks. One idea also introduced here is to use a predictor to predict the performance without fully training the networks. Let's discuss this figure that is taken from the paper. Let's say we start out with a set of candidates that all have one block. So uh, these possible one block candidates we can uh, put to the predictor and let the predictor do some analysis maybe by training fine-tuning. And then we're going to expand these one block architecture candidates by one additional block. Maybe uh, this one here, there will be two possible changes by expanding by a block. So we will get this architecture candidate here and this architecture candidate here. Then the predictor will look at all the possible generated candidates and select the top ones. So then up here we have a bunch of candidates that have more blocks and these are selected by being the top predicted ones among this uh, set S prime 2. Again we'll let the predictor look at these maybe do some training fine-tuning to learn some more about how to predict the performance of architectures. We'll take the architectures in S2 and again propose some modifications like adding an extra block. So for example this architecture here there will be two modifications one here one here so we get these candidates. All right then all these candidates in this set S prime 3 will be evaluated by the predictor and then again we'll choose the best performing ones. So we get the set S3 which might be the best performing three block architectures. Finally, we look at the paper DARTS, Differentiable Architecture Search. The figure that you see here is again a simple abstract representation of what's going on in this paper. What we're presenting is a method that allows you to search for a cell. And um, the main idea here is to say that in a lot of this previous work, the optimization was simply too complicated. We need something that is much simpler, preferably something that allows us to use the simplicity of differentiable optimization for architecture search. All right, how can this be done? What we see here in these graphs are nodes 
that are latent representations. Think about feature maps in a convolutional network. So let's say this would be the input to this block or cell. Then there are edges, and the edges are operations. So how can we go from 0 to 1? So 0 are some feature maps, this is a tensor, and then to go from 0 to this block 1, we are performing some operation here. And this operation is um, maybe indexed by two integers, that is the first node where the edge comes from and the second node where it goes to. So maybe this edge would be the edge 0, 1. So these numbers inside the nodes, these are the node numbers here. So this edge here that I underlined, this would be the edge 0, 1. And then this edge here that I underline now, this would be the edge 0, 3. To go from 0 to 1, we want to have some operation on this edge. But what operation should we apply? There will be multiple different candidates. Maybe some convolution, maybe some max pooling, maybe some zero for no connection, maybe different types of convolutions. Um, so there could be many options. So in this example here, let's just say there would be three possible options. They're denoted by the red, the green, and the blue edge here. So these different colored edges are kind of multiple options that for multiple, let's call it operation candidates, for the edge 0, 1. So even though the original paper doesn't do that, I'll use a third index to describe these options. So basically the edge 0, 1, there would be sub edges 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 2. So we would have three indices to describe this and in identify these sub-edges. All right. In the end, we only want one of these three. Let's say we only want to have a convolution. Let's say the blue edge here would be a convolution. But during training, we don't want to deal with the messy discrete optimization. We want something continuous. So what we're going to do is we'll associate each of these sub-edges with a weight alpha. So maybe for this blue sub-edge, there would be the weight. Again, we have 0, 1, 2. Uh, and then there's some other weight alpha for this green sub-edge and one for the red one. And during the optimization, we simply add the, upper, the, the outputs of these sub-edges together, but we don't simply just multiply by alpha. We actually run a softmax on alpha. So the softmax will uh, be helpful rather than just using the alpha directly. So in order to train this, some bi-level optimization is necessary that uh, basically does two things. So first, we need to optimize for the weights of these different uh, operations, so for example, the convolutional weights. And then we also need to optimize for the architecture itself. And optimizing for the architecture is mainly done by optimizing for these weights alpha that tell us which of these sub-edges, these sub-operations, will become more important. So for example, for this edge between 0 and 1, as optimization goes on, maybe, and I'll just made up that this is convolution, this blue convolutional edge will become more and more prominent. 
but for another edge, maybe the edge from 1 to 3, the green sub edge will be more prominent. Let's just say this would be uh, something like max pooling. Now, during training, we can sum up still uh, over all these uh, different operations. So in this case, we sum up the output of these three sub edges. But if we want to have the final architecture, we only want to have one of these sub edges being active. And what we can do here is to simply take the sub edge with the most uh, with the highest weight. So from zero to one, this blue sub edge will win. From zero to three, this red sub edge will win. From one to two, this blue sub edge, and so on. For more details about the bi-level optimization, please look at the paper. So when looking at the paper, you will see that this differentiable architecture search that I described here is uh, you know, only like one page long. And then the rest here, starting from three equation three downwards, this is for uh, the bi-level optimization. Here in figure five and figure six, you see some of the cells that were learned using this approach. When looking at the results, the main selling point here is that the search cost is quite small. So for example, looking at darts here, we see that we have GPU days, one to four GPU days. That is very manageable. And then by comparison, something like AmoebaNet and NASNet up here, there are several thousand GPU days. And this is uh, this type of paper made it possible for everybody to get involved in neural architecture search. This concludes a first simple introduction to neural architecture